Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Herrera, and I'm one of the cardiac anesthesiologists at um, Houston Methodist. Um, and I would like to introduce today our speaker for the DeBakey uh, Heart Center Grand Rounds, Dr. John Kellum, uh, who came to visit us from uh, UPMC um, in Pittsburgh, where uh, he's been uh, practicing as a critical care physician for the past 25 <laughs> something years like that. Uh, and I was uh, fortunate enough to have him as my mentor uh, 20 years ago. And at that time, I thought he was one of the smartest people I ever uh, had the privilege of working with. And now after 20 years, he's proven that um, he's far exceeded anyone's expectations. And uh, as a mentor, uh, as a researcher, and as a Grand Rounds presenter. So um, one of the questions that has been on my mind probably since 20 years which was, um, you know, I found it very interesting, you know, when I thought about going into critical care, um, and it was mainly because of my interest in uh, cardiac anesthesiology, cardiac surgery, and the kidney was never really on that, that list, but for, for over 20 years, Dr. Kellum has uh, focused on critical care nephrology, and I was wondering, how did you get into that specialty? That's a good question. Well, thank you for that uh, introduction, although I will say with that kind of introduction, I can only hope but disappoint you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but thank you. Um, uh, I, I have to say, I, I think that uh, I grew up sort of uh, in Pennsylvania and Ohio around uh, Cleveland. I grew up a Cleveland Browns fan, and that should tell you everything you need to know about uh, my, uh, my, my, my predilection for the underdog. And so part of my, my um, uh, interest in uh, acute kidney injury was acute renal failure back in those days, uh, was simply the fact that, that I, I couldn't understand why it was such a big problem that nobody seemed to be paying attention to. And uh, I sort of felt like it was a neglected area and something that uh, I needed to focus on because no one else was. And that was sort of really where I began. And unfortunately, I was, I was lucky enough to um, uh, run into some people like Claudia Ronco from uh, Vicenza, Ronaldo Bolomo from Australia, Ravi Mehta from San Diego, um, who shared this view that this is a really big problem that is not really being addressed. And, and uh, a group of us put together uh, some consensus conferences and began to sort of work through uh, creating case definitions for uh, what became known as acute kidney injury and then allowed us to develop epidemiology and then finally biomarkers and then hopefully now we're on the cusp of developing some really exciting therapies for this problem and so uh, it, you're right it has been sort of my life's work but it was born out of largely a, uh, a sense that you know this was a problem that just wasn't getting attention. That's right, until, <clears throat> because 20 years ago, uh, there was not a lot of focus on outcome. I mean, uh, surgeons could do whatever they, uh, 20 years ago, basically, we were getting crashes from the cath lab every Friday at four o'clock. We would, every cardiologist in America would call the surgeon. Uh, now, with the focus on outcome, um, we are looking at all sorts of outcome, including acute kidney injury. And so your work that was started over 20 years ago now has progressed so much that we're very fortunate that you did have that, that interest. And now everybody's looking at acute kidney injury. And it has such a big impact on, on things that patients care about. So, you know, so for example, if you undergo cardiac surgery uh, and you have no, no, uh, you don't develop a acute kidney injury, um, your chances of being alive and not on dialysis three months later, very good, right? So the rates of, of death dialysis in that population is 2%. Mm -hmm. If on the other hand, you develop AKI, uh, particularly if you develop significant AKI, stage two, stage three AKI uh, in your hospitalization, your risk of being either dead or on dialysis in 90 days skyrockets. It's nearly 10%. Uh, and so, um, and of course, you know, patients don't really um, understand that, right? I mean, they, they, they sort of understand the, you know, we talk to them about the risks of infection and the risks of stroke and various other things. 
risk of stroke is far lower mm -hmm. than the risk of developing acute kidney injury. And right. so it's really not on the radar screen. Despite uh, 25 years of, of effort to, uh, to get the word out, uh, it's still slow in, 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 in coming. And so uh, I'm hoping that um, uh, attention to this problem by groups such as yours and, and many others around the country and around the world, uh, we're finally turning the, the corner on that. And I think we're, we're getting to the point where we're recognizing uh, how big of a problem this is. And then once we fully recognize it, I think we have a much better chance of, uh, of modifying this, this process. That's awesome. I mean, I think that uh, uh, thanks to your efforts and uh, increasing awareness in uh, the cardiology and cardiac surgery, certainly the cardiac surgeons are aware of it now, um, that hopefully our outcomes will be, will improve. And um, I guess the last question would be, what do you think? Uh, the possibility is for the future um, in terms of um, both uh, identifying patients at risk, uh, communication, uh, communicating to the, to the patients uh, and optimizing them to, um, you know, uh, preventing it or uh, identifying them and then coming up with what kind of bundle uh, you know, sure, in sure, the future. Sure. No, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very optimistic. I, I think we're, um, we really, uh, now that we've uh, uh, recognized that the magnitude of this problem and have started to focus on it, there are already uh, programs that are reporting rates of acute kidney injury that are fractions of what uh, the, the average are. And so I think there are models for how to provide much better care for the kidney uh, in the setting of, um, uh, of cardiac surgery, as well as uh, potentially other kinds of of insults. I mean, this is just one of many ways that right. people can develop acute kidney injury, of course. Um, and, and so I think that's part of it. I think the other part of it is there's just now so much interest in developing uh, treatment strategies for mm -hmm. these patients. So identifying patients early and then potentially giving them therapies which could be uh, translated into better outcomes. Um, the one, the one. So, so I'm very optimistic. I, I think the one concern I have out there is that uh, there's a tendency, I think, to, um, you know, because of the way we fund biomedical research in this country and the motivation for developing therapies, uh, are largely based on numbers. And so uh, people look at cardiac surgery and they say, well, it's a very prevalent problem, and therefore uh, there's a lot of money to be made by developing a, a drug. The problem is, is that the patients that will benefit from this, from an intervention, um, although they'll benefit a lot, it's probably a very small segment of the population who really develop significant kidney injury. Um, and so we, we need to be careful that we don't develop something and have it fail because we're looking at a, a larger population only because we then want the return on that investment. And so we really need to motivate uh, pharmaceutical companies, maybe with public dollars and NIH, et cetera, to really focus on the truly high-risk population because mm -hmm. those are the patients who benefit because right. uh, if they develop um, severe acute kidney injury, their prospects for a normal life after cardiac surgery is, are dramatically reduced and we really need to protect those patients. That's right. Okay, well, thank you very much, Dr. Kellum, and thank you for listening.